This is the benchmark AHP2. These are the reference system for CMA. Welcome to Convince Me Audio. This black beauty is a power amp from Benchmark, weighing at 5.6 kilograms roughly and providing more power than you'll ever need. Under the hood, there are technologies that go beyond simplicity. It's absolutely body armor-esque, bulletproof in regards to safety. But this is a headphone channel. Why the hell is it on the table, seeing as there are no passive speakers here? Because it's one of the few amplifiers that works incredibly well as a headphone amplifier. But before all that, let's take a tour around the unit, shall we? You have a very simplistic front panel with a bunch of LEDs indicating all the types of protections that might occur during usage. On and off button, which can be held for five seconds, get a two relay click sound, and you can have it on all the time. Or if you just push it once, and if there's no signal going into the amp, it goes into standby mode after about 40 minutes, I believe. It's very simplistic. It's a power amp. There is very little to it on the outside. As we spin the unit around and yeet it across the desk. Nah, we won't be doing that. We don't want to hurt Jamie over there, do we? These are the heat sink fins that basically dissipates all the heat from this ABH topology power amp. This unit runs really, really cool. At the back, we have a pair of binding posts and it can be used with spades and bananas. Spades is a little bit more tricky. Obviously, you have to go underneath and it can be problematic. So bananas is really recommended, locking ones if you can. Um, but in my use case, it's speak on all the way. Clicks into place, locks into place. It's a professional uh, proprietary connection and it's absolutely fantastic. I will demonstrate in a moment how we've been using this with headphones, but we use the speak-on connections. There are three of them. A pair that works in stereo, obviously, and you can actually have a single one working when you're putting this unit into the next feature of this amplifier, mono. Now, in mono, brace yourself, sit down. This amplifier outputs 380 watts at 8 ohms. In stereo, 100 watts into 8 ohms, 190 into 4, yada yada yada, going down the list. Frequency response is from 1 hertz to 200 kilohertz, so every creature on the planet can actually hear it. And on the other side we have a gain switch, so we have low, medium and high. And uh, there's something to actually um, take into account here, the low and then separated, medium and high, go through separate boards and they sound a little bit different, which we will discuss. So, gain switch on this side, mono and stereo on this side, speak-ons on either side of the power, and a singular one for mono block, and then <clears throat> the inputs. We only have a pair of XLR inputs. This is a balanced amplifier through and through. Benchmark is known for their measuring. They not only measure their equipment, but they audibly test their equipment too. Benchmark states, you cannot achieve perfection just by measurements. Audible listening is critical too. And all of these units go through audible listening as well as measuring from the factory, individually. The construction is immaculate, perfect, solid. This thing will be around long after you're dead and when your great-grandkids find your stuff in the attic. I am pretty sure. Despite all the power, this is not a Class D amplifier, it's an AB topology. Okay, some of the measurements, the noise flow on this thing is at 0.0003 dB. Dynamic range is at 132 dB. I think it's still the best measuring power amp on the planet. It was for a very long time. 
but I think it still might be. It will drive any speakers you have without any problems. This thing runs quiet, this thing runs cool. This unit has a multitude of protection circuits, voltage, current, output, distortion, muting the unit if full volume is detected to prevent equipment getting damaged. Just look at some of these specifications scrolling down here. It comes with a manual thicker than the benchmark DAC-3B. So basically you've got Lord of the Rings in that one. This one is the conclusion, the two towers and the return of the king. Uh, I mean, if, if, you want, if that is some light reading when you're on holiday, take it with you. It'll probably put you to sleep, but there are every measurement under the sun in there and it's fantastic. So that's the hardware and specifications of the amplifier. But let's put it back on the reference system and let's see how it sounds. Yoink! Earlier, I alluded to using this power amp with headphones, such as all the headphones you see behind me. How do we do that? So, this silver 8-core lit cable is from Viking Weave, from Skedra. This cable was purchased with my own money, costing an arm and a leg and maybe some toes too. So these are the speak on connections I was talking about. You can have it in stereo mode on one amp or in mono block like that using the center speak on connections with two. The other end is a Furitech 4 pin XLR female for your balanced headphones. Like I stated, this amplifier is balanced through and through. You won't be able to use single-ended headphones on it. But you can use single-ended DAC via the proprietary cable from Benchmark from RCA to XLR. Please check out the website. All the information will be down below for those kinds of cables because they need to change the wiring internally. There is a reason why... There is a reason why the monoblock Benchmark AHB2 on my right, Hollow Audio Serene KTE, Hollow Audio May KTE as a DAC and the Pre have been utilized as the benchmark of the channel. The reference system, the $25,000 system that goes up against anything on the market. The benchmark AHB2 has the capability to drive any headphones to its fullest potential without any ceiling. Hi Fi Munster's Varas. We will get onto that in the headphone section. So, how does the Benchmark AHB2 sound? This sound characteristic of this amplifier is neutral with a touch of warmth in the mid range. If you have heard the Topping A90, the Purify, I think you will feel right at home. It's a tiny bit THX and a lot more musicality but it's reference it's clean it's transparent high resolution neither bright nor dark just portraying what the DAC is feeding it stage is enormous absolutely massive the fact that we use a Benchmark AHP2 for headphones, a power amp for speakers, and then put up with all the quirk, such as adapters like this one, rather than a beautiful setup like this, obviously the May and the Bliss and the Red, is due to the lack of ceiling. So let's break down the sound. Bass hits hard because there is absolutely no roll-off. The amount of current this amplifier provides for the hardest of headphones, including the Hi-Fi Varas at 83 dB, is ridiculous. This amp outputs 100 watts of power into 8 ohms. So even at 60 ohms, you're roughly around 38 watts of power. And it's current driven. The amount of current this amplifier outputs is insane. It has the capability to go up toe-to-toe -to -toe with whatever you throw at it. The low end, as I alluded to for Sesvaras, is unlike any other amp on the market I've heard. And being a reviewer and going to CanJam, I've heard a lot. 
I've heard headphone amplifiers in the 10,000 range, 15,000 range. And even those can't match the power of the monoblocks. Weight, impact, the ability to sustain a 20 hertz frequency response constantly as the notes are hitting from the instrument without petering off is something that is immediately apparent to you. It hits those peaks with all the power, current and voltage it requires without it ever being too much. It's linear, it's reference and it's analytical and it only showcases what the music and the musicality has to give. It gets out of the way. But as a single unit, we can't keep talking about monoblocks, there are subtle differences. Where on monoblocks you got heavy impact from the bass, you get 2% less, 3% less. But where sub bass is impactful on one, but remember, this review is exclusively pertaining to hard to drive headphones, not speakers. The sub bass gives you an extra 5-6% over a singular unit when you have it in monoblock. Can somebody tell the difference? No, not for a while. You have to live with it. For me, I estimated it to be at 1% to 2% within the first week or two. Then I listened to it for a month and then I was away for five weeks and then I came back. And that's when you realize that there is quite a difference between monoblock and singular, but only for somebody who's pushing for the last one or two percent. The differences are subtle, but as a collective, they create something. Crosstalk is eliminated with two, but crosstalk is already ridiculously incredible on one. I find the treble region is a little bit more glaring with one. It's a little bit more peaky, it's a little bit more sharp. Two changes the tonality and it's a little bit smoother and you get a little bit more resolvability and this is difficult to work out why. Stage definitely opens up a little bit more, but not by much. Everything is a shade more. But if you have one, you're not going to really miss two. Not until you've lived with it for months at a time. So, as a singular unit, incredibly powerful. Sounds great, drives any headphones, protection galore, so it never feels as though you're gonna blow up your headphones. Otherwise, I would never recommend it or use it on my channel as a reference system. There are protection systems for every aspect of this unit. But how does it play with headphones? What does it give you? Let's discuss. I don't think, as a rule, you require a power amp for headphones. Especially these days with the release of Bliss, CMA15, or an Hypsos. But if you were to go down that route so that there is no ceiling in your future, so that you can throw anything at, at the headphones that you will be bringing in later on, this unit provides these sorts of sound characteristics for hard to drive headphones. Let's take Aria V2 for example. Those headphones sound great on a lot of equipment people use, usually under $1,000 to 1,500, Syncer SA1 being one of them, topping A90, etc. But when I tested Aria on the AHB2, I had the shock of my life. I never believed those headphones could scale up so much. I think they might be one of the biggest scalable headphones I've ever come across bar Sazvaras. Those are just a weird freak. Bass was impactful, huge. Stage was enormous, layering was fantastic. Most importantly, tonal balance and detail retrieval was enhanced. I think it was the best setup with the spring from Hollow Audio as a system with those headphones. The Diana V2 was another exceptional one where it enhanced the beautification of the tonal balance of those headphones that it provides. Moonlit, basically. And bass never rolled off and it was punchy and it was impactful. Most importantly, those headphones have an intimate sound stage and it opened it up way more. 
rather than having a triangular formation, holographic 3D. Opened it up way more. Very impressive. Another old lag is the HD800S. I genuinely don't think I've ever heard those headphones sound as good as it does on solid state as it does on this. Check out the review up here. Except on tubes, obviously. But on solid state, the HD800S actually brings punchy mid bass, deep sub bass, and the enormity of that stage that those headphones provide is elevated and enhanced, except you have more detail retrieval and textural information now. On monoblock, I literally purchased those headphones within 48 hours. You get a flat frequency response um, all the way from sub bass to the treble region where everything rises very, very, very gently and you don't feel as though it's mid-focused or bass-focused or treble-focused. It's a linear soundscape, this amplifier. And it will show the characteristics of the DACs you use. And here I use the May, the CMA15, and everything else has come through here like the Dave and M Scaler, TT2 and M Scaler, Hugo2, CMA15, I think I said that three times this review. Uh, sorry, I'm just getting old, I think. It's been the rock. The benchmark AHB2 has been the bedrock of Convince Me Audio in the reference system. Okay, so why would somebody choose this over a normal headphone amp? It's like I alluded to earlier. It's so that you are future-proof in your desktop. And the problem is, and there are problems, this is a power amp. You will have to create adapters, such as this. You can't just plug your headphones in. You can't plug IEMs in. But don't tell anybody, I've tried hard to drive IEMs on it. Kind of worked. I scared the living crap out of me, so um, I don't recommend it in the slightest. Please don't do that. I did it as a test to see if it worked. And funnily enough, there was no hiss. But I am not gonna sit there, uh, first of all, saying you should do this, and second of all, sit there comfortably with IEMs near my eardrums with 380 watts of power or 100 watts of power into 8 ohms. And most IEMs are usually 8, 14, 32. Don't do that. It's very dangerous. The second problem and caveat being you need a super pre. I recommend using something like this. The Hollow Audio Serene. Not only do you get a massive range of volume, but it's a proper hardware implementation protection barrier between your source and your enormous power. It's the equivalent of a fire hose. You need to have control over that amount of power. Never, under any circumstances, implement a digital pre, ever. This being something like the Dave with its internal digital pre, called TT2 with its digital pre, or any others. Make sure it's a hardware stepped attenuator with a barrier with resistors so that you can control the volume. And in my experience right now, it's been the Hollow Audio Serene. Like I stated, it's the reference system on the channel. Those are the caveats if you're planning to use it as a headphone amp. But for safety reasons like will it blow up my headphones etc, I've been using it consistently for like 12 months, never an issue. You don't get any pox, any deviations, any bad things. It's bulletproof. And how the monoblock performs for speakers, we will discuss this when we get onto speakers and we test it with Martin Logans. But for now, absolutely exceptional. Conclusion. Do I recommend this amp for headphones? I do. If you're planning on securing a future where you don't have to worry about performance. Is it tricky? It can be irksome due to the adapters. Is it worth it? Wholeheartedly. So what's the scores? Build quality, technologies, design. 
five tigers out of five. Sound quality. If you like reference, if you like studio-esque performance with absolutely no barriers and no limitations. Remember, you can use a Chu Pre with this. You can use a Ladder DAC with this. You can use Delta Sigma with this. Five Tigers out of five. Price point for what it does. Not seen one like it. Five Tigers out of five. Overall score. We have a second. Five Tigers out of five on CMA in 2023. Well done, Benchmark. My goodness, are the monoblocks endgame. Until the next one.